This video is brought to you by Toys Arama UK. Use promo code TURTLETALK upon checkout and receive up to 10% off of these selected lines. That's promo code TURTLETALK. Link is in the description. As collectors, we dream of our ideal display. Showcased on a shelf, immersed in a diorama, or shining bright in a cabinet. Some are living their dream, and others are doing what they can to make their dream a reality. Join me in a new journey as I attempt to do just that. What is going on Toy Fan Project Piper Customs here and welcome back once again to the channel. It's a new year, there's a new cabinet and this is a brand new series. Now, one of the things I absolutely adore about the collecting game is the amount of creative avenues within, especially art forms. Okay, and you know we dabble with a little bit of it here in terms of customizing and in toy photography. But as I said, this is a brand new year, so we're going to go and dive deep into a new art form. And that being diorama making i'm surrounded by the best when it comes to diorama making uh, so obviously their influence has rubbed off on me now we have dipped the big toe into the pool very briefly with the sewer diorama that i made last year i believe uh, if you want to check that out there should be a little thing right here popping up if it isn't that means i've forgotten to put it in but now we're going to stuff the whole foot into the pool i'm keeping the water wings on though now as you can see my display space is kind of limited all right to so the Detox you see behind me, that shelf up there, and there's one above me here. But we're going to primarily focus on these two bad boys behind my head. What we're going to be doing each episode, we're going to be taking one of these cubes and we're going to be creating a showcase diorama for that franchise that's dominating that cube. Now, my collection is quite vast. Sometimes these cubes may change. And with it, maybe a new diorama too. But for now, as is, we're going to be focusing on the ones that are already in there and what a better place to start off with than my favorite franchise and one you've pretty much seen plastered quite a lot all over this channel tmnt the movie line specifically from NECA. absolutely love this line i'm going all in fight me but as it's growing vastly there's more and more being pumped out from the various different films within this line i'm running out of room as you can see it's pretty chocolate block in there already so i've had to expand it and I'm giving it another one. But this is a prime opportunity to do what I've wanted to do and how I've dreamed of my display being for some time. And that is putting them in a display diorama environment. So the plan is we're going to have the heroes on one shelf and the villains on another. Now, it really didn't solidify me how much I needed this until I went and visited my friend Pietro, Total Boy 83 as you know, amazing diorama maker. Yeah, I fell in love with his builds uh, on Instagram, became a huge, huge fan of his. We became friends and I was able to go and visit him and see his amazing work with my own two eyeballs. One of the environments he had was obviously the capture of Splinter environment and it blew me away. And it just made me think, this is what I want for me. So once I promised myself that the moment I was able to get the space, which I have now, that was exactly what I was going to do for this particular franchise. And with that being the goal, it was time to break out the sketch pad. Now it's time to flesh out this idea onto some paper. Now with the limited space of a Detoff shelf, I'm primarily focusing on the backdrop and the base leaving the side walls of the glass cabinet exposed so that you're able to view the display from different angles in a showcase format. So now we're working on the backdrop and I had the idea of having the crates that are behind Splinter uh, more 3D than have it be just a printout. Okay, so we're gonna have them just protruding a little bit out from the wall, allowing for some depth, but still allowing for some room to showcase the figures. Okay, so here we have the primary center focus of the environment, which is of course Splinter being captured. Okay, he is the centerpiece of the environment. Excuse my bad rat drawing. Now that we've got the backdrop and centerpiece sorted out, it's time to focus on what we're going to have on the sides. Now in the movie references, there's a lot of pallets in where he is quite high up we're not going to get that high up but we are going to make a bunch load of pallets providing that my hand doesn't cramp up halfway through but we'll see how many we can knock out at one time next to that we're going to have a load of shipping boxes and throw over to the other side where there's an even bigger stack of shipping boxes all different kind of brands and all packaging strewn everywhere 
adding in some final details like chains and rope and leaving the open part of the base exposed so we can have some more figures in the display like Shredder, some Foot Clan members and of course a version of Danny. Now for materials I'm using pink insulation foam for the backdrop, not the best but it's nice and thin and can easily slip behind the inner frame of the DTOF which will eliminate the need for magnets. And for the base I'm using a big sheet of polystyrene from some inner packaging I had and this is nice and thick and I was able to cut it around the inner frame of the DTOF to maximise the surface area. Alright, as you can see, we've jumped a little bit ahead. Uh, so what I'm doing here is I'm just prepping the floor. Now for the floor, I'm going for the wood floor look. As you can see from the visual references, you can notice that there are some wood slats. I honestly thought it was concrete for ages, um, but there are some wood slats in there. So I'm gonna go for the wood floor look and I'm using these craft sticks, okay? Just standard, large craft sticks that you get in your hobby store. And basically, yeah, just nipping the ends off as you can see, made a whole bunch of them and now just getting a feel for the layout. So I've got them down here loose, okay? So I'm just planning the structure. I've got a whole stack here more, okay? And uh, yeah, so what I'm doing now is I'm just going in, I'm seeing where the cuts need to be, okay? Just so where I need to cut them along the edge, all right? So I'm gonna work that out, get, uh, get a few of them cut. And once I've got all the cuts worked out and then we're going to go ahead and start gluing it down. Now, normally I would use a hot glue gun for something like this, but with how quick and how fast a glue gun sets with the glue, uh, I wanted a little bit more freedom so I can just play with the adjustments, you know, if any one of them's shifted or out of alignment. Uh, so what I'm going to be using, I'm just going to use Mod Podge. So I'm going to lay it all down. Uh, with Mod Podge so I've got time then to just sort of move them about still before the, the glue sets and then once I've got them all in position and then I'll let it cure overnight and hopefully it'll be nice and dry and flat so uh, so yeah that's what I'm going to be doing now so let's get cracking Well, that didn't work. As you can see, started laying these down, but the Mod Podge has begun to warp each of the panels, making them like that, okay? Which is causing them to bow, and yeah, they are not wanting to stay down. All right, so twisting the hell out of them. I guess it's just absorbed all the moisture, and uh, yeah. So I'm going to have to rethink this one, going to have to be a hot glue gun, but because all these are now warped, every single one I've just glued down in this section, I'm going to have to recut. All part of the learning process, I guess. Arse. Oh well, back to square one. All right, so now we've got the base drying, it's time to look at the fence, more specifically the fence frame. All right, so as you can see in front of you, we've got these two dowels. These came part of a wood working kit of uh, different various pieces of wood. You've got some craft sticks, all sorts in there. And it came with these dowels, two different sizes. Now, individually, both of these sadly are too small lengthways uh, for what I need, but they are the right thickness. Both of them are the same thickness themselves. Okay, so sadly with them being too short, both of them decided to glue them together okay so here we are both of these are attached as you can see there's the seam line there all right so once I glue them together I just gave it a nice sanding so the entire thing is smooth and you won't notice the join but that there is a great length pretty much perfect for what I need and I've got five of them to make there's one so let's make the other four
Okay, it is the next day and as you can see, I've uh, jumped ahead a little bit. So as you can see, I've managed to get the frame for the fence glued together. And I've added these, uh, I've left this excess as uh, sort of legs, as sort of feet. And the reason for that is, if I bring this over, I managed to get the floor done. So as you can see, hot glue was the way to go in the end, but finally got there. I uh, just recut some of these and then just sod, sod it. I'll use a hot glue gun. The thing I was going to do in the first place, always trust your instincts. So yeah, I managed to get the hot glue gun to uh, do the job. And uh, yeah, sand it down the edges so they're all smooth. And as you can see, we, I put in two holes and that is for the feet of the fence. So let's bring this up. And these just slot in like so. Right, bosh. And that keeps it upright. That's been a Rooney. Right, so as you can see, fence is staying put. So yeah, this worked a treat. All right, you Roo. So I just wanted to show you where I'm at with things right now. I have gone ahead and painted the frame. Okay, gone with a black base and then hit it with a silver spray. And then I uh, yeah jumped on and started adding the mesh. Uh, this mesh uh, was recommended to me by Pietro, old turtle boy. It's the same mesh that he used and I got it off Amazon. And I will link that in the description. But I did want to go ahead and just give this a try in terms of wrapping it around. Because uh, I struggled to try and find a good approach for it. But um, turtle boy recommended that you know uh, it's okay to overlap as uh, it will make it seamless. And of course then just roll it over which is what I did okay so as you can see you know just one end just has curled over just like that just at the top luckily it was long enough where it just reached the bottom all right so here's the other sheet it's like a four size and you get four of them all right so the idea with this instead of overlapping this is actually the cut so this is one sheet that they just cut in half so the cut itself actually aligns pretty perfectly this is about there minus the top area and uh yeah but i just want to try and get that into a position where it can meet up and align like that and then i'll do continue the process of curling it over i'll trim this side slightly and then hook over the excess and then for keeping it secure on the fence all right as you can see i've just done the bottom here i have this very thin wire all right so i've got a row running on the bottom i have one bit if you can see it just there in the center and what that effectively is is a different kind of mesh okay let's get that out of the way so you can see this mesh it is very very fine very very fine bit of a check pattern same material i made my uh, raphael uh, new york city uh, central park uh, garbage can there's a link to the video on how i made that in the description and this is left over but what this stuff is is very uh, very loose and i can just pull an individual thread that creates a perfect, um, very, very thin uh, cable tie. Uh, be careful if you're gonna do this, because obviously it's very thin, it can slice right through you like cheese wire. But this is very, very uh, good in terms of hiding. So I'm gonna go, once I've got the other panel on, I'm gonna go throughout the entire edge and just you know get it secure so it doesn't go anywhere. And yeah, so that is where I'm at with the fence at the moment. And whilst I took the opportunity of it being a nice day, as it's been raining all week, uh, in terms of spraying not only the fence, I also took the liberty of getting the base prepped. So I used the last of my spray can black. All right. So as you can see, it's very sporadic, not very even. It's literally because it was puh, 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 just spitting everywhere. But I managed to get a good, decent coverage of a black base coat on the floor and now that's ready for when I start the painting I can go in and begin dry brushing uh, and all the weathering to go on top of that so that is where we are with things at the moment right so the next job now is to crack on get this other fence panel laid out and uh, yeah I believe then we can get on to some more painting so let's go
Okay, now we're on to the painting. As you can see, I've got the floor area in front of me. And what I've done so far is I've just given it a nice light sanding just over the surface to bring back some of that wood grain. And the idea is with the color scheme of the floor, it's obviously a gray uh, color as well, but with a lot of dust everywhere. So I've been uh, experimenting a little bit. So I have here mixed up, I have a medium gray, I should have some black and white acrylic. But that's sort of kind of what I'll be using for the walls as well uh, to give it that concrete feel. So I also tried uh, a little bit of light gray, okay, just to, to add a little bit of dry brushing on the highlights. And I experimented on a couple of panels. So I'll spin you around over this side. All right, okay, so this one here, I basically did a, a medium dry brush of the medium gray first, and then I went over it with a very light dry brushing of the lighter gray, just to see. Uh, then on this one, I just went in with the light gray um, dry brushing on top of this, no medium gray at all. And I actually kind of prefer it. Uh, yeah, it kind of gives you that dingy feeling still. I'm gonna go with that and see how we get on. So yeah, I'm gonna be mixing up some more light gray and just going in with a light dry brush across the top, see how we get on. And yeah, we'll take it from there. All right, and that is all the dry brushing complete on this bit, and I'm pretty happy with it, actually. I like the way it's turned out. It looks like moldy old floorboards that have just been through the ringer. But we are not finished there. No, we are gonna be experimenting with a finishing touch. We'll see how it goes. Hopefully it doesn't ruin the effect. But basically, yeah, what convinced us all that this was concrete was that it was completely covered in dust. So we're gonna try and recreate that look. And uh, best thing I can think of using for a dust substitute is cement powder. <laughs> Actual cement powder. Okay, so we've got a bag of this, it's just in the garden, so I just pulled out a cup load and it's just this fine powder. And what we're gonna be doing is I'm gonna be rubbing it in all over so it'll get into all the nooks and crannies and the seams and we should have a nice dusty floor. And moving on to the crates that are gonna be behind Splinter. As you can see, we've got them here prepped and ready to go. And we're gonna be using the same pink foam that we used for the backdrop. Okay, and we're gonna have it layered up. So as you can see here, it's gonna give it its thickness. And we're gonna be covering them with this thin sheet wood. And this is gonna give the illusion that there's a solid crate behind him. Okay, now with the pink foam as the core, this is also gonna make it light enough to be modular, but also sturdy enough that it's not gonna move about in the display, which is great. So yeah, I just wanna give a massive shout out to Turtle Boy 83 once again, for not only helping me with these crates in terms of showing me what sizes they were and how many there were, but also the measurements that are scaled for his ones, which helped eliminate some of the guesswork with mine. So shout out to him. Okay, and as you can see there, once all the four panels are on, then we can move on to the trim around the outside, which will be the last little detail on the build itself, and then we can move on to weathering. Okay, and once we've got this one down, we've got four to go.
daughters care for their sons. There it is, and I cannot be happier with how this turned out. Absolutely ecstatic, really, really am. Wasn't smooth sailing, there was a couple of bumps along the way, but that is a learning curve that comes with it. There is a couple of cheeky little things I did in there just off camera that I do want to take you through. So now we're going to get handheld and dive in. All right, let's move into the thick of it, and here we go. First thing I want to talk about is this ceiling piece. Now, I did not make this on camera, as it was only about halfway through the build did I actually figure out what I wanted to do in terms of lighting. So I'll put this together. Now, in the film, you don't actually get a clear reference as to what the ceiling looks like, so I did get to have some creative freedom with this one, including some cracks coming from the uh, light grills, and of course these beams, which are helping hang the rope and the chain. Grills themselves are made from a sandpaper mesh that I had lying around and this is helping defuse the light so it's not too sharp on Splinter's head. Moving on to the lights themselves, as you can see these are different from the regular strip lights that I've got throughout the rest of the cabinet and I wanted these on their own circuit. Plus I also wanted the light to concentrate downwards only um, in this small space. So I've got these two attached here and I can turn them on and off separately from the cabinet. And as you can see they're just creeping in. Just They're not centered to the grill, they're just creeping in and that's what's going to cause all those shadows and give you that mood. The chains are from eBay and I will drop a link in the description and yeah these are just secured into the beams via eyelet screws from a jewellery making kit and the same goes for this side and the rope pulley is actually made from some ribbon crimps that I squished around a piece of balsa wood and then drove a cocktail stick straight through the middle and this gives me a little working pulley for my rope string. This chain at the back here, the one you saw me drape over, is actually the original chain from the shackles from the Capture of Splinter set. But obviously I took it out and changed it for this longer one, but I still wanted to include it, so I just draped it over the fence. And at the back here, you see there's a bit going on. So down here, there is a big clump of fabric hanging over this crate, a detail I noticed in the movie. And this fabric is actually from the inner lining of a presentation gift box that I had lying around. So it was a good thickness, so I just tore it out and it's acting like a tarp over this crate. Moving over here, and as you can see, we have some netting, and this is a detail that Pietro picked out. There actually is netting hanging over this crate. So I found this on Amazon, and it's just some fish netting that you get in a roll. So I just trimmed off a section and draped it over. Here we have an extra piece of this chain link fence that I just wrapped over, and this again is simulating some netting that's draped over the fence. And then we have some leather rope straight over there just for some added detail. Now the backdrop itself, you didn't actually see me paint on camera and this is literally just a dark grey mixture. No other details in the paint added as once all the lights are on, this is going to look really dark and I wanted it to add to the depth, obviously illuminating these crates and making it seem like there's more behind than what there is. And lastly, and possibly my favourite part of this, is these boxes. Now, these branded boxes are actually screen accurate to the ones that are in the movie. Me and Pietro had a blast hunting down all the original images and all the original signage and packaging and pictures trying to find out what those images actually were and as you can see there's a lot of JVC. They must have had a sponsor in the movie. But yeah, once we found some good visual references of this identical packaging, uh, we pretty much rebuilt all the logos and branding from the ground up on Photoshop. So as you can see there we've got the Hyper Bass Sound, we have this JVC Master Command 3, the Veriflex Skateboard Box, and we have the RCX3 down here, this JBC AV271 down there, the Michelob beer, the Tiger brand, which is a fun one to put together. Okay, this is just a separate shipping box. And of course we have ITE, and then we have these two. Now we've got Bazooka and Crate Crate Crate. Now these two weren't actually in this particular environment, they were actually in the environment for where Casey jumps the foot soldier and steals his clothes in record time and they're actually behind them in that scene, but we wanted to pick them out and put them in for fun anyway. And the same goes for the Archie Comics box, little one that we put together here, and this is actually in the scene where Tatsu and Shredder are talking on the balcony, and it can be seen on a bunch of boxes way down on the ground. Down here, we just have some regular shipping boxes with generic labeling, and of course down here, we have the Marlboro cigarette box. Whether you want regular or menthol, we got you covered. And possibly moving on to my favourite of the boxes, which is this one. And this is the one that Danny actually sits on when he's talking to Splinter. And yeah, when we were looking at the original reference for this label, the only word we could read on it was inspected. So when it came to recreating it, we decided to have some fun. Yeah, we are not letting NECA live that down. 
And moving on to some of the last little details, as you can see, we've got this little stereo system here, and this is actually a piece from a dollhouse miniature set that I decided to paint up. Over here, we have a tech deck finger skateboard, which I just painted the wheels red on. And of course, my final detail is Casey's club. And of course we have Splinter's Crate, which if you want to see how I made it, please do check out the first episode of Get Crafty on the channel. I will link it in the description. Now with all these details in play, it's time to set the mood. And that's a wrap for this project. I hope you enjoyed it just as much as I did building it. If you want to see some sexy glamour shots, be sure to check out my Instagram at Project Piper Customs to go and see all of those. And yeah, if you enjoyed this kind of content, want to see more, it'd be really great if you could hit that like and subscribe button so you can stay tuned for all the latest that's coming. And I cannot wait to get on to volume two. Have a guess as to which one's next. <laughs> but until then, I'll see you in the next video. Thanks again. Take care.